G'day, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I'm going to continue with this um, Apple Watch form that I started the other day. I'm just going to uh, split the split the lens out and um, maybe make a few tweaks, and also maybe have a look at it and um, have a look at the surfaces in Rhino uh, just to analyse what SolidWorks has made uh, as far as density of control points and it's stuff like that okay so the other day i had built this corner with three sections in this direction uh, and since then i've i've added another cross section through here um, which pierces the sketch that was there the other day i've added this because when i brought up my reference file I was actually um, a fair way off in this area here and had no way of, 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 of pulling the form back. So I added this extra cross section and um, I'll just show you the sketch there. So it's very similar to the sketch that controls the extruded sides. Um, information's all there, including the degree. Bezier, curb. And mentioned it, and again, this point here is um, similar to what I did on this um, on the extruded surfaces. So that's that's the midpoint, equidistant from the front to back of the product, um, and constrain that tangentially to a vertical um, line there. So that will be the widest point of the product. And it hasn't put any big winkle, uh, wrinkles in anywhere, which I was a bit concerned about, because sometimes it happens when you go over defining surfaces. Um, yeah, cool. So I'm going to just split out the top of this to make the lens. So I'll use my reference um, from Rhino. It's going to measure top plane so 3.665 millimeters and with that plane I will insert feature split because I want to split this body into the surface body into two cut bodies and then pick both pieces to keep so that gives me two bodies from the one I'll hide that I'm just going to create a planar surface here I'm not going to um I'm not going to make the parts overlap or anything like that so on that plane I just created create a sketch, select tangency, convert entities. So the plane our surface. Knit those together and now I'll show the lens. Um, I'm just going to bring my references up because there is a bit of a step in the side of the lens here so just a rough dimension maybe just a 0.2 step so again back to that plane sketch and I'm going to offset As edges 0.2 and then close that. Oh, actually, I'm not going to close that yet. That surface, I'll just extrude it up. I'm 
and then trim standard trim i'm not doing metro trim uh went over this in video the other day why not i'm trying to get myself out of the habit of using mutual trim okay and now on that same plane again i'm going to create the uh a planar sketch so I'll convert entities of that sketch that I use for the extrude and then two lines. And knit those together. Whoops, that as well. Okay. So that's the basic um, lens split out of the form. I'm modeling this uh, in a quite a different way to, than I did in Rhino. I, I don't mean just like using um, curves to control the surfaces rather than manually manipulating the CVs. Uh, when I modeled this in Rhino, I brought this um, surface round and terminated it here rather than bring it right up to the top because the um if you look at the product from here to here there's the blends quite a lot um curve, the curve happens a lot quicker uh so I, I i broke the surface there and as long as it's tangent uh, with that little step i don't think you'd read um the, the curvature sort of changing a little bit there okay so now I'll, I was going to make this quick because it's late. I'm going to mirror these over and solidify them. So mirror bodies, bodies, then repeat the mirror again. And knit. So I remember to turn merge entities on, as I explained the other day. So the planar and extruded faces don't end up with these extra surface breaks. And I'll just solidify that quickly. I like to use a separate thicken just because it's easier to interrogate if something falls over if you've got quite a complicated model. Rather than doing it in the in these knits down here, because if this was a say a thousand features and you had a knit and the knit contained the uh, solidifier, you wouldn't you wouldn't know that unless you've specifically named it. So hard to troubleshoot. And we don't want to merge the body, so oh, merge result. There we go. Okay, so those are solid now. Um, might just change the. Material on the uh, on the lens. And Okie dokie. So The lens split out you can see that sort of sharper curvature happening through here which you see on the lens on the product and then sort of follow around us around this okay i'm gonna just um drop this into rhino quickly so we can have a look at um at what the actual underlying surfaces are you know so i've exported um the SolidWorks model and my my references which started in Rhino back into Rhino as a step file so 
Just gonna grab the SolidWorks output. Drag it off to the side here. Um, I'm gonna flip this. Okay, so this side is SolidWorks output, and this is my original Rhino model. Minus a few details there. Um, but you can see straight away how dense the um, surfaces out of SolidWorks are. So I'll just extract one of these corners. Um, and drag it off to the side here and untrim it. Okay, so that takes us right up to the top here. And then let's interrogate it. And you can see there it's a degree three surface with heaps and heaps of CVs. So, uh, turn the points on. Look at that. So it's super dense. Um, would be a nightmare to manually uh, edit afterwards. It's gonna show what the surface over here was. Okay, so original Rhino surface. Degree seven one direction, degree five in the other, single span, and there's the CVs. Um, so quite a difference. And now let's just have a look. The zebra stripes with a sort of fairly fine mesh. So there's no glaring wrinkles or anything in the SolidWorks model, but I think what you can take from this is the SolidWorks output, like if you spent more time obviously than I did making something like this, is 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 fine for a lot of situations. Um but where it would become a nightmare is if you were transferring the SOLIDWORKS model into a uh, NURBS package like Rhino, I think, where, where you were going to go and take these surfaces and manually manipulate them because there's no way you're going to be able to um, manually manipulate a surface like that uh, without rebuilding it extensively. Even the, um, to look at the extrude. So the extrudes are right. You could use some of the surfaces, um, but definitely not like the corner blends. That's a degree eight. So that that extrude has um, has uh, used the input spline and honoured the uh, the degree of it. Yeah. So anyway, that's that little experiment over. I don't think I'll spend any more time doing anything on this. Um, the SolidWorks model for this with the lens split out will be uh, available in the description if anybody wants to download it and and um, have a look at it and prove. Yep. Anyway, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Hope this is useful. If uh, if you found it useful, please subscribe. Cheers. Bye.